So this is the augmented reality sand table, or ARIES project here at STTC in Orlando. What it consists of is just a regular traditional sandbox with actual sand in it, a Microsoft Kinect sensor from the Xbox gaming system, a regular COTS projector, and then underneath the table is a laptop, a standard laptop. These COTS components aren't very expensive at all. We put an arm on the back of the table to support these. This facade in front of it just hides that to make it more appealing. But in total, this is just, uh, uh, well, with the laptop, a few thousand dollars. And with that, we've been able to create an extended capability for uh, traditional sandboxes used in the military. So with these components in place, we can leverage a lot of really cool software to do a lot of things with the table. And what we want to research here is the best way for the system, the software itself, to tell the user how to shape the sand to match the terrain that they want to work with. In this case, you're seeing a Google Maps view of Fort Irwin. <clears throat> and these units are using standard military symbology and they're moving around, but um, this is just demonstrating the concept that you can see these sort of detail, this sort of detail in the terrain and using uh, existing databases or even Google Maps, you could, you could use this for any terrain in the world. So this is Fort Irwin also, and we're showing one SAF, uh, a one SAF scenario being conducted on the same terrain we were just showing you in Google Map. Um, in this case, you see the standard military symbology and the one SAF interface, and the concept here is that with the Microsoft Connect sensor, you'll be able to control these units and tell them where to go and who to attack just by gesturing and pointing instead of having to use uh, have a, an, an intermediary or someone using uh, menus and submenus to control these entities. All right, in this case, you can see in uh, VBS2, the actual armored units moving across the sand. You see their tread tracks and the smoke coming off them, the turrets moving. It's a really good example projected here in, in a fully lit situation inside of a, a building with lights on that you could display the units as both military symbols and as their graphical entities. Uh, it's much more engaging, more interesting, it makes people want to get involved, makes people want to play with it, and it looks like a true war game that will we think makes students feel more engaged and excited about doing their exercises. So by leveraging open source software, in this case, we're demonstrating that the components of the sand table really do work together. Helps us calibrate and demonstrate the concept, but the point is you can see very quickly that one could shape the sand to create any kind of terrain you wanted. And then you could save this terrain through the system as a uh, terrain database, a 3D file that could be used and brought into, imported into like OneSAF or VBS2, systems like that. And you can see that you could also create your own fictional scenarios for doing like tactical war gaming. You could shape the sand however you want based on, uh, well, lessons learned reports or experiences that soldiers had. Right now what you're seeing is the color is changing to match the topography that the sensor, the Microsoft Connect, is picking up. But in reality, once you were done with that, you populated it with um, vehicles and buildings and entities and then gave them behaviors, this could be running a one SAF type uh, scenario or war game right on the sand and uh, with just natural gestures to control everything and just putting your hands in to shape the scenario. One of the things we're going to be looking at is how to enhance the table augmented reality, leveraging other technologies and projects, for example here in the building, we're using an application for augmented reality here on this tablet. I'm putting markers down to indicate where buildings are if you wanted to do an urban environment or an environment that had water towers, cell phone towers, or even just aerial vehicles circling overhead like helicopters. In this example, can see in the augmented reality software that the buildings are actually 3D, fully realized. You can move the tablet around the building and see the sides of them, the entrances and exits.
that's the commercial off-the-shelf projector and right here is the Microsoft Connect sensor in the Xbox gaming system. We have an LCD panel mounted onto the arm for us to project slideshows and do training videos and demonstrate some concepts you could use that for but basically it's just the arm attached to the table itself. What we want to do is research different things like uh, if you did a very large table like at a Ford operating base or a training center that needed one of the large 12, 20 foot tables. I've seen some that cover entire gymnasium floors. If you want to do a larger table, would we need to daisy chain the systems? Would we need to uh, research the overlap of the sensors? There's a lot of things we can research. For example, going in the extreme reverse, miniaturizing and ruggedizing the system using like a Pico projector or one of those pocket projectors and uh, smartphone technology. Could you do this whole system in something that uh, is backpack portable, vehicle portable, maybe even pocket portable? And the user could pull it out. A soldier in the field, for example, could use it, pull it out, and aim it down on the ground or the hood of their vehicle and do their uh, drill and their practice before they move into uh, the planning before they move into an operation. The Ares table is currently funded in the Projector Program it's for Joint Coalition Training Research here at STTC. And uh, we have a contract that we're going to be awarding here any minute now, actually, for development it's to go from this proof of concept table to an actual prototype. It's going to involve, the contract is going to involve working with SMEs to develop the user interface and what their capabilities are required to do things such as uh, tactical wargaming. One of the first capabilities that we'd like to demonstrate with the table is a networked wargaming. We think that the joint coalition partners could have this software on one table and then the same software on two or three other tables and via the internet. Uh, you could put the blue four on one table and the op four could be controlled at another table and you could do tactical wargaming uh, across the internet. Quantico and Fort Benning could be doing their joint mission planning. So we've had a lot of capabilities briefings uh, with the sand table so far. VIPs and visitors and users who've come through and looked at it. So far the reception's been great, everyone likes it and they keep talking about all the different use cases they have for it. One of the most common ones that come up is uh, using this for land navigation, map reading, terrain topography training. People really like the idea of letting the user, the soldiers, come in here and shape the sand to create the spur and the saddle and the ridge, and then really learn in a way they couldn't with the field manual or PowerPoint uh, what the map features are, what they really look like. And we think that, well, what we want to do with the research is determine if this really does contribute to long-term attention and better understanding of the battle space.